let me welcome all the speakers of the day. So, you know, it's very interesting. We, uh, we have always had this, um, you know, view, the, at least the physicians and the healthcare providers, we've had this view that technology providers, we've always treated them as vendors. But now it's very, very clear that the relationship has to change. We can no longer be a client and a vendor relationship. We are, have to work as partners. And in this partnership mode, we can look at very successful rollouts. So I'm going to call uh, our next speaker is Dr. Harsh Mahajan. I think for the community, for all the listeners here, Dr. Harsh Mahajan is someone whom everyone knows. So Padma Shri Harsh Mahajan, Dr. Harsh Mahajan, I welcome you. And uh, well, just in one line, if I were to say that he is a radiologist, more of an entrepreneur, and he has done everything that a startup does, that is starting you know, new models of business, private-private partnership, public-private partnerships. And now he is um, you know, he's also an entrepreneur in the space of AI and radiology. So Dr. Harsh Mahajan, really looking forward to hearing what you have to tell us. Thank you very much, uh, Uma, and uh, thank you. It's an honor to be present among such uh, luminaries. And, uh, you know, if we talk about how does technology really affect, how does technology really get adopted, how in, in, in the real world, um, I think the first thing that needs to be done is educate. Educate about what the technology is all about, how it is going to affect the way we diagnose disease or the way we treat, how it's ultimately going to help each and every one of us who are in the healthcare field as providers, be it doctors, be it nurses, be it uh, paramedical uh, people. And then Ultimately, how the whole healthcare ecosystem, the hospitals, the diagnostic clinics, the doctor's clinics, how they can actually benefit from introduction of something which is new, something which is disruptive, something which may uh, require uh, new uh, uh, skill sets, something which may require people to learn something new. And uh, then I think the core is how it is going to affect the patient and the healthcare delivery itself. Is it going to improve outcomes? Is it going to improve efficiency of delivery? Is it going to reduce costs? Those are practical things. If we start with the education of those who matter for one, being uh, those who are to decide on what technology to bring in and why. And then uh, those who are actually to use it on the ground, uh, the former I think are important to begin with because that's, they are the decision makers. And then the lower the, down the chain are the users of that technology. Now users are those who need to understand the impact on the patient. And, uh, you know, if, uh, as you know, we, we work in the field of diagnostics and, uh, you know, at our clinics, we provide uh, anything from X-ray to ultrasound to CT, MRI, nuclear medicine, PET CT, and on the other side in lab medicine, all the way from hemoglobin, all the way up to uh, next gen sequencing. So here, we have been toying, uh, and, and thankfully for us, radiology and imaging has been digital in nature, really from the get-go, at least, uh, you know, uh, from the time that I uh, got into radiology, which is in the mid 80s and uh, early 90s, everything started getting digital. Then we got the DICOM standards. And that again is very important. When some uh, technology has to be all pervasive, it should also be such that, uh, especially when it's digital, there have to be standards. And the DICOM standards were created 
for uh, the 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 healthcare industry and for imaging in particular which actually democratized the entire process which led to you know uh, interoperability scans being transferred from one to the other and as we've seen as the uh, you know the internet of things has come into its own now tele radiology telemedicine uh, in, in interchange of data images scans all of them have become very simple because everyone adhered to that diacom data so whether it's a g machine or a philips machine or a siemens machine or some something that's made locally in india we are able to transfer data because everyone follows the same norms now coming back to uh, the upskilling and education piece that is a ongoing process because with the rapid advances that are being made in digital health in uh, computers in uh, 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 data science uh, with the you know uh, uh, computers becoming better and better uh, the uh, cost of transferring data even uh, to the cloud and uh, from one site to the other becoming uh, uh, much cheaper than what they ever were i think this democratization is happening and we saw this uh, you know adoption which happened uh, due uh, uh, first uh, uh, and the second phase of the uh, pandemic where is uh, uh, you know in india where what we saw was that the hospital beds were filled and so there was telemedicine which came into its own there was home health which came into its own wearable devices were used uh, to monitor uh, patients and uh, the adoption actually happened fairly quickly because that was necessary so i think globally we have leapfrogged uh, 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 because of the pandemic that may actually be a little silver lining to the very dark cloud of the pandemic that we've been able to leapfrog uh, things which may have taken uh, a decade uh, uh, have got done in a year or two and uh, also it has percolated into the conscience of uh, uh, you know governments into the conscience of citizens at large as well as the healthcare fraternity that uh, digitization is a must it must be adopted and uh, uh, telemedicine remote diagnosis um, uh, home health even home health uh, became a reality something which again may have taken a long long time and and so the pandemic actually spurred us into action on the other side you know uh, india was capable of doing only a few hundred rt pcr tests when the pandemic hit and today we can do uh, over 2 and a half million tests a day uh, with a lot to spare that that also required a lot of digitization to happen it required use of data it required use of uh, genomics data Uh, to be able to develop even the vaccines that have uh, come to their own and and so um, you know necessity they say is the mother of invention and uh, really uh, uh, the the pandemic has been useful for this one aspect of uh, the healthcare systems globally and and we've seen dramatic shifts happening in india coming specifically to artificial intelligence Uh, which is making uh, inroads into all walks of life and uh, healthcare could not be any different and because radiology imaging is uh, all about digital data that has been the first frontier apart from ophthalmology dermatology um, which are also using ai in uh, clinical practice of course these are still the early days the early years of uh, ai and it still has to evolve there are ma many questions about liability about the quality uh, which have to be answered but the fact that uh, so much of brain power globally 
in the best of startups in the uh, Microsoft, G, Philips, Siemens, IBM, then the academic institutions, the Harvards and the IITs of the world, all of them are working hard. There's billions of dollars that are being spent into developing, uh, 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 you know, AI algorithms. And that's where, you know, we thought about four years ago uh, when we were uh, delving into AI, yet adoption has been very, very slow. And that's where adoption, I think we felt required a, a, a system, a platform, which could be put into existing healthcare systems, digital systems in hospitals, be it PACs, be it uh, HIS systems or radiology information systems. And that's when we built carpal.ai, which is really a system, it's a software platform, which helps AI developers develop their uh, algorithms, helps radiologists to uh, label the scans, to segment the scans, it can house AI algorithms in an absolutely open-ended manner. Suppose you build an algorithm, uh, Uma, you can house it on it. Someone, uh, there's a startup or there's a G Siemens Philips algorithm. Uh, they can do it. Uh, academic institution builds it. They can put it on. And then after that, what we built was a validation system built into the platform. Then pre-testing. Uh, uh, of algorithms before they can actually be uh, sent out into day-to-day -day clinical practice to know how accurate the algorithms are. So really to be able to fine tune the algorithms before deployment by changing the thresholds. And then most important for adoption is that you cannot change the healthcare uh, digital systems that already exist. So you have to build the, uh, a deployment system which actually can go in an open-ended manner and reside in the existing PACs or HIS systems in hospitals. And that's what we built with carpal.ai. And also the radiologist who's ultimately going to use this AI to help him make diagnosis, to help him do it more accurately in a more time efficient manner, improve uh, uh, turnaround times of reports, improve accuracy. He also, he or she is used to a certain way of reporting. Most radiologists have two monitors in front of them as part of a PAC system and using them is how reporting is done. So again, this platform and the deployment of AI had to be done in a manner where it actually goes and becomes a part of the PAC system. And that's what we've been able to achieve. So what I would say in conclusion is that for any technology to be adopted, we need to not actually disrupt or change the way uh, uh, things are being done in a healthcare system. Because with that, adoption is not going to happen. What we need to do is actually build systems which are able to adapt to the existing uh, 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 digital systems, uh, PACs, HIS that uh, exist in hospitals, which are able to uh, stay within hospitals if that's the requirement because of privacy issues or go on cloud if that is what uh, uh, is the way a hospital system wants to use it. So uh, the the it cannot be that you develop something and then come to the hospital and try to fit your uh, invention, if I call it that, uh, into the hospital system. You have to first identify the problem, find a solution for it, and build it in a manner that it goes seamlessly into the existing systems uh, uh, in, in as undisruptive a manner as possible. So thank you very much and over to you. Thank you, Dr. Harsh, for telling us about your wonderful journey and how radiology is evolving. And I think we haven't seen uh, anything. We, we, you know, there's so much more exciting times ahead for us.